Hello, my beautiful friends. My name is Kim, and I hope you are having a fabulous day today. If you are interested in true crime like I am, I hope that you would consider hitting that subscribe button. But either way, thanks for being here. Exciting news, you guys. I have launched some merch. It is in my merch store. It should be under my videos. Check them out. I'm going to add a few more as we go and change them up. But if you like any of the designs, they're available if you like them, if that interests you. Today's case literally makes my brain hurt, not to mention my heart. Anaya was a four-year-old little girl who had her whole life ahead of her. But by the hands of her mother and her mother's boyfriend, Anaya's life was ended. This case is not for everyone. If you are triggered by cases that involve children, please click out of this video. Check out one of my other videos. My emotions throughout my research of watching the trial, I have ranged from pure outrage to grief for Anaya and her family. Without further ado, let's talk about Anaya. <laughs> Anaya Marie Garrett was born September 2, 2013 to her parents, Michael Garrett and Sierra Day. She lived in Euclid, Ohio, which is a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. She was a bright preschooler at only four years old. She was a beautiful little girl, full of life. Anaya and her mother, correction, the person who birthed her, hardly a mother, whose name was Sierra Day. They lived at Cultural Garden Apartments. Apartments. Sierra's boyfriend, Dante Lewis, also lived at the apartment with them. Although there is some controversy whether he lived there or didn't live there, but we'll move on. Anaya attended Harborcrest Daycare before she was taken out by Sierra, and then she was enrolled in a preschool called Ready, Set, Grow. The trial opens up with a 911 call from Sierra and her boyfriend. Anaya's mother then rambles on for over three minutes and 50 seconds, almost four minutes before Sierra decided to tell the 911 operator that Anaya is not breathing. Here is the call. What do you need an ambulance for, sir? Yes, hi, my, uh, my daughter is having a hard time breathing. She's breathing, but she's young. She's barely breathing. Is she able she to talk in out. complete sentences? No, she can't. She's not talking in no complete sentences at all. How old is she? Four. She had fell out, and we were just trying to see what's going on with her. Is she conscious now? Is she conscious? Yes. But, but she's not really breathing. She's not speaking. She's not speaking. She's not responding to us. Is she awake? Her eyes are open. Her eyes are open, yes. But she's not really alert? She's not saying anything or responding to our... When I press down on her chest, she would make a sound. Okay. Well, don't press down on her chest, okay? No, with two hands. Uh -uh. Does your daughter have a history? Does she have a history of what? Yeah, does she have a history of any breathing issues? No. What was she doing before this happened? Well, she's been acting a little sick. We, we went to Red Lobster last week. I thought it was because of that because she started acting weird. I thought it was like a, a stomach virus or something of what she ate or whatever. And I noticed as she's been at home, we started like feeding her and she was just throwing everything up. So gave her ginger ale, she threw the ginger ale up. I gave her, I gave her Tylenol, she spit that up. Okay. When's the last time she ate or drank anything? Um, we try to give her um, some breakfast in the morning and she ate like a little bit of it but it's like she kept chewing and she was prolonged to chewing it for a long time. She's been having these flu, these flu like symptoms for how long? It started last Thursday when we came for her last so we know that she started acting weird. Since last Thursday? Yes. As in like a few days ago? Yes. Has she been running a fever? Um, She was a little hot but then her body would like just be weird to turn cold. What is your name? Anaya, A-N-I-Y-A. -A. What's your last name? Day, D-A-Y. Did you guys try contacting the child's pediatrician? Did we try? Yeah, did you call our pediatrician when this started? No, I actually just spoke to a 24-hour nurse. Okay. 
What is she doing now? Well, now I just got her sitting up. I tried to even um, put my um, do mouth to mouth. Well, if she's breathing, you probably don't need to do CPR. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I like I put my fingers. I put my. I'm just trying to. I'm just. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what else can I do. Like I put my hands up to her nose to see if she was breathing, and I didn't feel no air coming out. Like she got her eye open. Wait a minute. Is she not breathing? No. Your child is not breathing. No. Okay, let's do CPR then. That's what I'm trying to do. I, I, I didn't do my whole force two hands. I just two, two hands, two fingers, two fingers basically is what I'm doing. Okay, I want you to get her on a flat surface, okay? Okay, say it again. No. They just told me, yes, we're going to start CPR right now. Okay, put, okay, put, put, the, phone, put the phone on speaker. Put the phone on speaker. Put the yeah, phone. let's put the phone on speaker, okay? If you guys have an AED available, I want you to send someone to go get it right now, okay? What available? An AED machine? No, we, okay. no, we don't have that. All right, place your daughter flat on her back on the floor, okay? Okay. okay. Kneel down near her chest. She is definitely not breathing, correct? Yes. Okay. Place the heel of your hand on the center of her chest. Mm -hmm. Put your other hand on top of the first hand. I want you to push right. down firmly on the chest at least two inches, only to the heel of your hands. Okay. okay? We're going to do it 30 mm -hmm. times, just like you're pumping her chest, okay? You're going to count out loud with me. Are you ready? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. We're going to keep going, okay, hard and fast, okay? She starts breathing, okay. then we're going to stop. We're going to keep doing this. Keep going. 1, okay. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Keep going, okay? The squad just called that they're unseen. We have, I need some, one of you guys to get up and go open the door. Okay? okay down there now. Is she still not breathing? Yeah, she make a sound whenever we do that, whenever we, you know, you do the little pumping thing. She made a sound like a, hmm, 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 hmm. Is she, she breathing? Stop. Check her nose. Somebody should still be pumping. You feel cold air. Feel cold air. Yes, you feel cold air coming out the nose. There's cold air coming out of the nose? Yes. Okay, if she's got air coming out, is her chest rising up and down? <coughs> no. Her chest is not. All right, keep pumping. Okay, if her chest isn't going up and down, I want you to keep going until the squad gets there to take over. Okay. I'm going to count with you again. Let me know when the squad opens the door. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, she's having a time breathing right now, guys. What? Oh, the, the, the paramedics are paramedic here now. All right, all right. Let them take over, okay? All right. All right, thank you. You don't hear crying. You don't hear hysteria. You hear a heartless, cold-blooded woman and man who even at Anaya's death couldn't admit the damage that they had been hiding and had caused. Sierra met Anaya's father, Michael Garrett, in the summer of 2012 while he attended Garfield Heights High School and she was enrolled at Shaw High School. Anaya was born over a year later on September 2nd, 2013 
2018. She was given the last name Garrett after her father. Michael testified that he wasn't really comfortable in the relationship with Sierra approximately a year and a half after their daughter's birth. The couple eventually separated in November of 2016 after he spotted his belongings in the garbage. According to Michael, he moved out to a residence in East Cleveland. Michael said after the separation, he would try to spend weekends with Anaya because she was with her mother during the week. He said Anaya would always run right into my arms when describing his visits with Anaya. She was enrolled in Harbor Crest. Harbor Crest contacted the CCCFS about abuse claims after observing Anaya had blood in her ear and blisters on her head and a scrape on her nose. CCCFS found the claims were unsubstantiated. According to the police report, there were 14 abuse observations while Anaya attended that daycare center. On several occasions, according to testimony, Anaya admitted mommy hit me. Most of these claims were filed away and not reported. They documented them, but they only put a, the daycare documented them, but they only put them in her file. On September 12, bruises to face, eye, and arm. Mother stated that Anaya had fallen out of bed and had removed a bandage where Anaya had been given a shot. September 17, only five days later, bruise to right side of face. Looks like a handprint. Couple days later, September September 21st, bruises on her face, under her eye, and on her eyelid, Anaya stated that my mom did it. October 22nd, bruise to right side of face, look like a handprint child cried most of the day. October 25th, bump on head, Anaya was crying. Michael and Sierra separated at this point. This is now November 2016. So there was five reports in Anaya's file at this point. Do think whatever you would like with that information, but to this point with those allegations, Sierra and dad, Michael, are together. We'll move on. December 1st, Anaya had a bruise under her right eye and was crying. Anaya stated that my mom had hit her. Mom stated that it happened at Applebee's. December 2nd, bruise on the left side. Anaya stated that mom has been hitting her. December 6th, the daycare observed rug burn type scar on left eyebrow. Anaya stated that mom hit her. Two days after Christmas, December 27th, bruise on forehead. Anaya stated that mom and dad did it. January 18, Anaya came to school with several bruises on her face, arm, and back. Anaya has a raised bruise on her left upper forearm. When asked about it, Anaya stated that her mommy had scratched her. February 10th, 2017, dark colored bruise under her left eye. Anaya stated that mom did this. Staff had noticed bruises on her every day when she comes in. March 14th, 2017, right side of lip was busted. So there are so many. I'm going to stop going through them. You get the picture. What they were doing was documenting it and putting it in her file. They they weren't reporting it to authorities. So many times Anaya said, my mom did this. It came to an end on May 18th, 2017. Right side of head and ear swollen with blood in her ear. It's at this point, 911 was dialed and EMS came. The files from the daycare were then handed over to the police. And according to CCCFS, they are notified by the police. Did Sierra get her shit together and stop being a horrible mother? No. She switched her daycare. She pulled her right out of there. She was done with Harbor Crest. They told on her, and that's when she was enrolled in Ready, Set, Grow. In July of 2017, Sierra and Dante Lewis began dating. Eight months prior to Anaya's death, Lewis's lawyer throughout the trial claimed he didn't know Anaya was being abused. Although Lewis admitted Admitted to questioning Sierra on how she was punishing Anaya. And Sierra, like most parents say, it's not your child, stay out of it. He also claimed that he didn't live in the house with Anaya and Sierra, that he lived with
with his parents. He would only go over there and visit a couple times a week. He was reported to drop Anaya off at daycare eight times in 12 weeks. In my opinion, he was living with Sierra without a doubt in my mind. She had her own place. They were dating. He's living with mom. He lost his job. He, yeah. Anyways, he knew exactly what was going on and at the least responsible for doing nothing, but at the most, he participated in her death. I cannot disagree that abuse against Anaya happened long before Lewis came into the picture, but it sure didn't get better. It only got worse. You see something, you say something. And if you don't, there's consequences. Sierra's sister would testify that we were pretty good, really close growing up, but they had a falling out and were not speaking to each other just after Sierra met Lewis, her boyfriend. The sister of Sierra took the stand, revealing long before the four-year-old's death how she noticed changes in her niece's physical appearance. She noticed that she was behaving different. In her testimony, Sierra's sister described how her sister became very distant from her family and wasn't coming around as much as she used to before she met Dante Lewis. Her sister said she had siblings, that her and her siblings were close during their childhood, a bond that she said continued into adulthood. We were all each other had, the sister would say. It was during the family party in July of 2017 that Lewis was introduced as Sierra's boyfriend. They were always together. Every time Sierra came around, Dante was there. He had a car, so it was basically Sierra's car. She would say basically her ride. Every time I saw my sister, I saw Dante. Her sister said changes became noticeable after Lewis came into the picture. On occasions when Sierra brought Anaya to family gatherings, she observed noticeable changes in Anaya in her behavior. She didn't really seem like the child she once was. She was very standoffish. She didn't really seem happy. Sierra's sister said on the stand after talking about Anaya's change in behavior after mom began to see Lewis that physical changes began to become noticeable. I don't want to think that things were what I was observing in my head, Sierra's sister would say. I would ask questions and I would get excuses and I would just leave it at that. She told the court that she noticed on some occasion that Sierra would take Anaya in a separate room and discipline her. She pointed out that that she never saw Lewis discipline Anaya. She would mention Anaya would come out of the bedroom crying after being punished by Sierra, and one time she came out with a bloody nose. After not talking for some time, Sierra's sister said she grew concerned for Anaya in the care of Sierra. She would reach out to her brothers who were still in contact with Sierra to get information on her sister and her niece. With this knowledge of what she observed and the things her brothers were telling her, she called Anaya's father and contacted Children and Family Services. In September 2017, Anaya's father, Michael Garrett, spots bruises on Anaya during one of his visits. He calls the police. The claims were found unsubstantiated. During a September 2017 visit, Michael said he observed visible bruises on her chest and lower back. He also observed loose and rotting teeth. Michael's told prosecutors and defense attorneys that Anaya seemed hesitant or confused at times when asked about her injuries. Also, as if she were told, don't you say anything. She would say, mommy pushed me up the stairs. Michael said Anaya said that to him. He took photographs of the bruises and filed a police report with the East Cleveland Police Department. In the report, Michael said he alleged that Sierra was responsible for Anaya's injuries. He said he was not aware that she had a new boyfriend. Following the filing of the police report, Sierra asked for a restraining order in October of 2017. So Michael reports her and then she's like, oh, I know how to solve this. She gets a restraining order. She alleged that Michael harassed and stalked her and Anaya. The restraining order was granted, but Michael denied Sierra's claims when they went to court. Michael says he then started a motion to apply for 
for custody of Anaya, but he did not see his four-year-old daughter again between the time that he reported the abuse, September 2017. Basically, that was the last time that he had seen her because she died in March. On December 17, 2017, another complaint was filed with CCCFS. The claims were found unsubstantiated again. May 2017, September 2017, and December 2017, CCCFS were notified and found claims unsubstantiated. In January 2018, Sierra moved to Cultural Garden Apartment. When I, What I found important about her moving into this apartment is that during the trial, she was claiming or her attorney was claiming she can only read at a third grade level. So she was not smart enough to know that Anaya needed medical attention. You knew, Sierra, you knew. If you are capable of maintaining work, get an apartment on your own, you know your child needs medical attention. In February 2018, Sierra tells her brother Anaya can't walk. He visits Anaya and says, she's cool. Imagine going to visit your niece and the mom says she can't walk to get out of bed. You go in the room, you visit with your niece, you sh- you see she isn't looking great, admittedly cannot walk. What do you do? I would start by asking what is wrong? What does the doctor say? You need anything? Perhaps a ride to the ER? In March of 2018, Michael the father wants custody. CCCFS visits his home to see if he is suitable for the child. CCCFS set an appointment with Sierra for March 12. The appointment never happened. Anaya died March 11. There, of course, is more information that came out in trial. So pl- in the trial, so please check it out if you would like more information. But all that I have given so far brings us to March 11, 2018. Lewis made a 911 call about Anaya being unresponsive. You heard the 911 call in the beginning, and what a mess that was. As I mentioned earlier, they did not mention Anaya. Anaya was not breathing until almost four minutes into the call. Based on that alone, they are guilty in my eyes, but that is not how it works. So let's now talk about the worst part of this case. The paramedics arrived at the apartment and had to bang on the door because it was locked and nobody was letting them in. After some time passed, they were finally let into the apartment. They enter the apartment and the air conditioning is blasting and the apartment smells of bleach and cleaning product. Anaya was positioned under the air conditioner and she was very cold to the touch. The high that afternoon was 34 degrees Fahrenheit or one degree Celsius. The paramedic was a young guy and on the stand he was all but beside himself. He was upset. He wanted to know what happened and how Anaya ended up this way. Sierra stated that Anaya had dinner and went to the bathroom and fell off the toilet the night before and had been throwing up everything she tried to give her, either to eat and also medication she was trying to give her. The paramedic described that he could see that she was so so thin that he could count her ribs. She was so thin. They could see her knuckles. There was no fat or muscle covering her body. Anaya weighed 26 pounds, the same weight when she was a year and a half old, 18 months. Anaya was not breathing and the paramedic believed that she was already in rigor mortis. Rigor mortis can happen one to six hours after death. How long did Anaya sit in front of that air conditioner dead before they decided to call 911. We will never know. The medical examiner testified and this is the part of the case that made me physically ill. Anaya was so malnourished that her pancreas was digesting itself. She was starved for a prolonged amount of time to get her to 26 pounds. Her cause of death was a series of strokes that had been caused by blunt force trauma to her head. It is believed that she had this stroke two weeks to three months prior to her death. I'm leaning more on the three months just because because of the stroke, it makes her not want to eat 
and she laid in bed and laid in bed and just just disappeared to nothing. She had a black eye and a laceration on her eye that they believed happened a couple days before her death. What did Anaya do to deserve a black eye? She can't get out of bed. She can't walk. She can't talk. You give her a black eye? She had multiple bruises that were in different stages of healing on parts of her body. She died slowly and withered away to bones. She had bed sores from laying in a urine-soaked bed for a prolonged amount of time. Sierra 24 and Lewis 27 each face up to life in prison without parole, including aggravated murder, murder, endangering children, and permitting child abuse in Anaya's death on March 11, 2018. Lewis has a possibility for parole after 20 years, but Sierra got life in prison. Sierra put her hands together in a prayer and pointed to the ceiling multiple times during the opening statements during court. Girl, please, you are a monster. God cannot save you from your monstrous self. But you have to ask, was Sierra asking for God's help when her and her boyfriend left Anaya laying home in her urine-soaked bed starving to death so you two could go and pick up Chipotle the day before she died? I doubt it. They couldn't eat all of their food so they had leftovers in the microwave. Wrap your brain around that. Child starving and they have so much food that they can't eat at all. It literally makes my brain hurt. CCCFS, man that's a mouthful, approved a three million dollar settlement to the father of Anaya who filed and accused the county of failing to protect the four-year-old daughter from the abuse that led to her death. The county's division of child and family service received at least six reports that Sierra was abusing Anaya in the 13 months preceding her death. According to Michael's lawsuit, Michael accused the agency and its employees of failing to properly investigate those reports. A state report found that county social workers dismissed Anaya's statements and that her mommy had hurt her and allowed her to return home with Sierra. The, the state also found that social worker failed to follow up and follow protocol. She only made a few face-to-face -face contacts with the child and ignored two years worth of injuries reported by Anaya's daycare. I'm sorry to all the taxpayers in that area for having to swallow that much money of having to pay because CCCFS could not adequately do their job. The caseworker was fired from the department and now she works in education as like a teacher assistant or sub or something like that. Just think what three million could do for a department. How many caseworkers could have been hired? I'm not saying it wasn't warranted. Just makes me mad. Ready, set, grow. One of the two daycares accused of failing to report the suspected abuse of Anaya were, they were forced to close in March of 2019. According to a settlement agreement reached between Ready, Set, Grow preschool and the Ohio Department of State and Family Services. In addition to having to close their doors on March 31st, 2019, the owners cannot apply for another license to open a new child care provider license for four years. The complaint that prompted the state investigation into Ready, Set, Grow was brief and somewhat vague. The, the report, uh, the article that I read, it said one day in January, the child just stopped being able to walk and the parents started carrying her in. The complaint also does not specify what Anaya's injuries were. The owner of Get Ready, Set, Grow said Anaya's mother once worked at the daycare and if they suspected she was abusing her daughter, they would have terminated her immediately in order to protect other children and the business. How would you have liked to have known that Sierra used to care for your child? Yikes. Well, that is all for this case of Anaya Garrett and her 
awful mother and her mother's awful boyfriend. I know you guys are going to be outraged with this case as much as I am. I cannot wait to read your comments about this. So many people failed that little girl. Here is the comment of the week and it's by whatever channel 22. Look at how clean the city is. In America, there'd be trash everywhere. Girl, come to LA. Talk about trash everywhere. Yikes. Well, if you guys have made it to the end, you guys are rock stars and I love you to death. There are more true crime videos in my Captured Killers playlist if you would like to check them out. Either way, stay safe, my my loves. And remember, if you see something, say something, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.